Hello, good afternoon everyone, how are we doing? Hope we are all doing well. Um, just making sure the music's coming through okay. Why can't I hear the music? What's going on? Have we got desktop audio? No, we don't. Why have we not got music? A. Hey. to sound settings speakers uh, I've got the wrong hole no should be speakers is it this one ah there we go I got it it's because I took my headphones out to listen to something on my laptop. Anyway, as you can see, we're carrying on with this little number. Um, firstly, actually, I'm going to open up the background because this sharp change in coloration from here to here, you can actually spot it in the actual edit. Now, I have actually worked a little bit on this frame since I've last been on stream. Um, which is, is turning out to be alright. So I just mask that a little bit better. I don't think you can see those ones. And then what I might do is add a little hint of blue across all of this. Just like so and click save. Now what I can do is open up video pad and we can go to video pad in here which is loading there it is and then we can see what I've done so far in the edit but before I do that I'm I got a lot of sleep last night but a deep sleep Luckily our daughter didn't wake me up and I also changed my pillow. So I've had one of those days where I've had, finally had a night of good sleep. Then I've been to work 3am till 8am and then I've hit like a wall, I've like crashed. Uh, you know when you get like enough sleep and then you feel like crap afterwards? So I need energy. Mm -mm. Oh, that hideous sugary goodness. Actually, this is no sugar, sugar free, but that's probably worse. Alright, so let's see where we how we did. Yeah, it's looking better already. You can see I've started to do the walk off to the side. And that jumps a little bit too much. Maybe 56, I need to bend his head out a little bit more. Let's delete 56 from there. Delete it from here. And then we're gonna open 56 in Photoshop. I'm just going to tilt the head up basically a little bit so it doesn't seem so jarring. I don't know if you guys I'm just going to check my phone actually let me see okay you are you guys are talking in the chat, but I'm not seeing it on my computer. <laughs> so let me refresh my. Oh, you know what? I'll leave it on my phone actually. Oh no, I won't be able to do that because um, of my battery. Let me refresh my live streaming dock on here. God, that's irritating. Okay, I can see you guys now. Oh my god, that was so annoying. 
Freaky Boy John Dog, hello. Titan of Serpents, hello. Big Shark 9000, hello. Matt Centra, hello. Titan of Serpents says, time to work on some more Tanistrophius. Exactly right. Uh, how are you doing today, see Matt? I think I answered that question. Yeah, I'm a little bit tired. But doing well. Big Shark said, drinking that fizz milk, Jack. Yeah. Okay, I thought you guys might be saying something in the chat. And I was like, why is nothing coming up? Okay, so let's move this head just up a little bit more like that. And then just to get rid of these edges. So yeah, like I said, I managed to work a little bit more on this. Like only five frames since we last worked on it. And I also did tweak the... Oh my god, that's huge. Um, I did tweak the size of the the cattail heads in the shot because I noticed a lot of people, when I was watching the stream back, they uh, someone said um, they look a bit small, the Tanistrophius. And I was like, they do. And then I was like, actually, it's because the reeds... The reeds are too big. So in the edit, if we go back over to this... You should see. I've made the cattail heads smaller. You should be able to see it from there. So they're bigger in the Photoshop edit file that I'm working on, but the layered file that I have, uh, they're actually smaller. So they should should look much better. Uh, hello, Lewis. So okay, so this guy. Yeah, that's much better. Oh, then, then actually, no, the head. Uh, I need to tweak the head. So let's delete him again. Go back to Photoshop. Uh, open 56. That animation looks smooth, says Matt. And oh, wow, what a long neck, says Lewis. Yeah. The old Tanistrophius. You know what, I might actually warp this. If I put that guy like that, that might work better. I might just make that neck a little bit thinner. Got a bit of a chunky neck going on. Just shave a little bit off so it looks a little bit smoother. Looking good, says Big Shark. Mmm. Yeah, I don't again I don't know how far we're gonna get today, but um but now I can animate this dinosaur on stream. It's just gonna be a case of working working on it until it's done. Right, so fifty six back in to the edit. Yeah, that's much better now. Okay, so one more time. Perfect, right, okay, so save that. And now let's go back to Photoshop and carry on with animating the animation cells. Now what I do need to do actually is open up 56 again, but this time move him into this one because I've changed the head, haven't I? Put him over where this one is, like so. Get rid of that 56. I also made, because people were saying it's, they were too small, uh, if you notice, look, uh, I changed the size. So these ones I'm showing here are the old ones. I've upped the size of the animation cells that those are in the final edit. But then you'll notice they just it, he just jumps size in 55, <laughs> like he just jumps up. But that's because 55 is the new size. And I changed all the sizes of the actual individual cells um, that I saved separately to this file. But the old ones still remain. So he used to be tiny, like this. But now he's big. So anyway, right, so now we need a head. 
this one. Big Shark says, watched No Country for Old Men yesterday, got to say I remember it differently. I remember liking that film. Um, what was different about it for you, Big Shark? Anton was still the same though. Anton. Anton, he's coming to get you with his silenced shotgun. <laughs> Look out for Anton, man. He's got a grudge, and no one knows why. Oh, the ending with, um... Tommy Lee Jones basically saying I'm too old for this shit that's basically all he's saying I'm too old for this shit I'm gonna give up I've been reading this newspaper all film and well let's just say I I, I can't do this anymore so then he just uses the mind wiper from Men in Black I wanna just live on a farm with my wife you know, Jay, it ain't easy being a man in black. Hello, Ilya. 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 Now, I did find when I was editing this bigger Tanistrophius that um, it was actually easier to animate. <laughs> oh, easier to sort of sort out. Actually, I might have his head. Go up like that. Matt says the Tanistrophius's eyes just crack me up. He looks like he just witnessed something rather unpleasant. <laughs> Got those gormless fish eyes. And because the and because I'm de dealing in a bigger size, the neck is actually easier to animate hello Derek Porter how we doing freaky boy says kind of reminds me of Shin Godzilla's second form yeah that's that's the kind of eyes I was going for that kind of gormless Gormless fishy eyes. You know what? It might even be better. Having his body like that. The head reminds me of Smaug. Yeah, I wanted also to have like a dragon look to it, like an old Chinese, uh, like dragon, Eastern style dragon. Hello, Dominique. do with this tail. Right, I have it whip round like that. I just make this layer a little bit less visible. Derek says, hi, Jack. Jack, hide the police found. 
Well, it's funny because the because the mer- the emergency services use this road outside my house. So basically, there's a road outside my house, and then there's a main road, like beyond that. And in all the windows in this house, we have the uh, these like windows, obviously. But then we have a second set of like sound eliminating windows that you can put in and then it makes the house completely silent so you don't even hear the main road um except for one room which just so happens to be this room that my computer's in and uh and the police at night you know emergency services they'll turn their sirens off just on this stretch of road because of the houses after a certain time but they don't do it during the day for obvious reasons because people can't necessarily see the emergency services coming in the day more because the you know the light and everything and um, and it just so happens that I never hear them if I'm not streaming. But whenever I'm streaming, it's like we always hear a siren now every stream. It's, it's just quite funny. But I might not hear them just because I'm not concentrating on like the noise outside. Titan Service says, I feel like your Tannis Trophies could fit well in the Monster vs. version of Skull Island with all of the flora fauna, like the mother long legs. Mmm. Yeah, I like that. Right, so you can see the difference in animation. If I do that, you can see where the previous... Uh, where the previous one is in the background slightly, and then you can see where the new one's animation is going to be. Now notice, actually, that there is a load of grass in front. So if I take the white off, you can see there's this like load of grass here. So what I might do is cut that out and make that another layer and just put it over this Tanistrophia so it actually goes between that the grass there. Uh, but we'll do that in a bit. I want to colour this guy in first. So now we can move... Six. Let me colour this guy in now. What is going on with Kong v Godzilla anyway? What's the latest on that? Do we know? And before anyone asks, by the way, uh, in other news, I have not watched the two new episodes of Primal yet. I know I love that show and I bang on about it, but um, I say I bang on about it, I always just talk about how much I like it. Um, I don't really go into detail about why I like it too much because uh, people haven't seen it and I don't want to spoil it, but no, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen the two new episodes yet, still. It's funny because as soon as I come off stream, I tend to go look after the baby and, uh, and I just forget. And what I could do is actually watch those two episodes when I'm next watching her nap, which should be maybe this afternoon. So maybe I'll pop my headphones in and while she's napping in her baby hammock, I can uh, secretly watch the two new episodes of Primal while I'm overlooking her. You've all been avoiding news and you all pretty much think it's in limbo. Yeah, okay. Because I'm, I'm not being, I'm not kidding. Kong v Godzilla and Jurassic World Dominion are literally the only two films I'm looking forward to <laughs> going forward. I'm intrigued by this Predator news that Disney, or this new Predator film that was announced that they're making. I'm intrigued to see how much of a train wreck it might actually turn out to be. But that just might be my cynical side because of, like, you know, the um, what happened with the uh, the one by Shane Black. It's like how how much worse could it get after that? So it's surely got to be at least better than that. But um, you know, under it'll be interesting to see what they do. But I'm I don't know. I'm I'm not. I'm like cautiously optimistic. Well, I'm not even optimistic. I'm cautiously cynical. (laughs) 
Hello, Seeker. How are we doing? What are your thoughts on the new Dune movie, Big Shark says? Uh, I don't really care for it. Freaky Boy says we've got a better director, so that's good. The See, this is the thing, though. Like, Shane Black is a great director. I like I like his visual style to the stuff he makes. But um But like the guy who did 10 Cloverfield Lane or whatever. 10 Cloverfield Lane looked okay. But it wasn't like the greatest directed thing I'd ever seen. Like it was pretty just standard in my opinion. Like I didn't exactly see why it was so um like from a directorial point of view like there wasn't anything crazily interesting with the camera or anything like that that made me go whoa this guy's like a great director it was like it was just shot competently <laughs> dominique says i like a chicken little <laughs> do you know what? i've never seen chicken little but that makes me laugh because uh i was watching Disney's animated film Tarzan with my daughter. I had her on my lap one morning when we were when we were watching it, and uh, there's an advert for Chicken Little before that. Um, okay, I think that's. Okay, so 57 is where we've started, so let's... We're actually going to cut the head out. Seeker says, if Dino Defenders... Oh, hello, the Eggman. He says, ah, yes, long boy. Um, Seeker says, if Dino Defenders was a film, who would you have directed then? My ultimate choice, if it was just like any anything can go, anything goes, it'd be Ridley Scott. Uh... Doesn't that movie hang a guy? Wasn't it Clayton? Yeah, Big Shark. Yeah, it was. Titan of, Serpents, Titan of Serpents asks, I wonder if they'll play Battle at Big Rock at the theatre before Jurassic World Dominion. Uh, I would say it's probably likely. Because Universal spends so much money on it. It's like... And it would make sense. Uh, hello, Gary Pfeiffer. He says, uh, are there just one or are there more? And Big Shark said there's 15. Yeah, there, there are 15 Tanistrophius in this. Okay, so that'll be T... Fifty-eight. Seeker says Battle of Big Rock gives me nostalgia for the time immediately before the 2020 apocalypse. <laughs> yeah. Right, so let's. neck right come on
Keep it thin, keep it thin, keep it thin. There we go. Uh, the Eggman asks, if you could resurrect one shutdown game or mobile or online, what would it be? For me, it'd be Dino Dominion. One shutdown game. Um, probably that Jurassic Park free game, Survivor, or whatever it was called. It was for like PlayStation 2 or something. Hello, David. Who would you voice cast as Turner, says Gary? Um, I've got the voice in my head. I'm just trying to think of the actor's name. I can't think of the actor's name. Uh, I wanted to say Blumen. Um, oh, I forgot. I can't even remember his name. He's in Hulk. He plays the general. Yeah, I have some V for Vendetta, David. It's it's it's, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's an all right movie. See, because there's ever. Seeker asks or says, ever find it weird that the only game they adapted for JP3 until 2015 was Island Attack? Wasn't there um, Park Builder as well for the Game Boy Advanced? And Dino Defender? Sam Elliott, says Matt. William Hurt. No, not William Hurt, Sam Elliott, yeah. Um, the Eggman asks, what are you guys doing for Turkey Day? Do you mean Christmas Day? Christmas Day? Derek Port says, watching you animate makes me want to try and animate something. Yeah, man, just go for it. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, I have no idea. I didn't know how to really properly animate or anything before doing this. And I'm not saying I'm properly animating to a really good standard even now. I'm learning as I go. like, And I'm doing it in my own way. <laughs> But yeah, just uh, literally just pick it up and have a go. 
just have to be um, extremely patient because it takes ages. David asks, I asked you before how many Ang Lee movies have you seen, but I don't know what's your favourite Ang Lee movie. Um, it's a toss-up between... No, I don't know, actually, no. It's it's probably Hulk. It's a, yeah, it's a toss-up between Hulk and, um, and uh, Brokeback Mountain. I think Brokeback Mountain's uh, a good character piece. On a Heath Ledger's character, and obviously Jake Gyllenhaal's, but uh, but I don't know. I have more nostalgia for Hulk, and uh, and I think Hulk's interesting because of its like premise as a superhero movie, and it's like unlike any other superhero movie that's out there. It's totally unique. Eggman says Turkey Day is any day with Turkey or being in the country of Turkey. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I don't even know if we're having Turkey for Christmas, so I don't know what I'm doing for Turkey Day until I have a turkey in my day. There you go. There's my answer. Uh, hello, Wolf Gaming. Uh, Matt says, did you ever get a chance to talk to Colin Trevorrow or anyone else from the Jaywell movies? I don't just get to talk to Colin. I've had meetings and pizza with Colin. <laughs> I've been to parties with Colin. I e well, I sent an email to Colin yesterday asking him a question. I don't know how busy he is, so I don't know how, uh, if he'll get back to me anytime soon, but he usually uh, is very kind and does get back to me pretty quickly. Whenever... Uh, we have a question for him. Yeah, no, I, I talk to Colin a lot. Tiny Serpent says, I think he means Thanksgiving. Uh, well, I'm British. I don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Uh, Tiny Serpent says, I love that this is probably my favourite creature and it's also got my three favourite colours, green, blue and orange. Nice. Freaky Boy John Dog says, Jake Gyllenhaal is such a good actor. Loved his performance as Mysterio, Mysterio in Spider-Man Far From Home. I liked him in that film up until they revealed and until like the last scene where he's like I, I can't remember where they are. Are they in London? I can't even remember where they are. I think they're in London. And he's like controlling that that thing in the that thing in the thing. And he's like gone full villain. I liked him as the actual like you know they have that he's got like that illusion around him that he's this great superhero or whatever. I actually liked that character a lot, and I was like, oh, they've done that. They've done an Iron Man 3, and I think it worked in Iron Man 3, but here it's like... Okay. But... Bloomin' Spider-Man Far From Home, I was like, I can't even really be bothered with it, because I'm done. Endgame's finished, I'm done with the MCU. I followed it all the way from Iron Man. I'm done. I'm done with it. Like, put a fork in it. I'm sick and tired of superhero films. <laughs> Got superhero fatigue. Hello, Zion. Uh, Lewis says, Colin is a really kind man. He cheered me up two years ago when I had my first Korean sat. Nice. Titan of Serpent says, Oh, I didn't know. Brits didn't celebrate Thanksgiving, but I guess it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, we don't celebrate Thanksgiving. That's an old Yankee thing, a Yankee doodle thing. 
Seeker says, did you like Spider-Verse? Spider-Verse was fun. But again, for me, it's it's one of these things where I'm like... Uh, I'm just a bit fatigued from it all. Like any any superhero film now, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm done with superheroes. We've, we've got so many superhero things going on. All the time. It's like the concept of superheroes is just... I don't know. It feels like it's compensating for something. <laughs> it's like people are obsessed with superheroes because they really, really wish to be a superhero. And it's like they don't realise that they already are superheroes, but they just have to embrace it. Tom, hello. He says, I feel that. I really wanted to watch Marvel D plus shows, but I also feel that Endgame kind of end capped my time with the franchise. Well, that's like, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the thing. It's like, it's for me, it's not just the MCU. It's like, the I'm talking about X-Men. I remember when X-Men 1 came out and Spider-Man 1 in 2002. Like, and I grew up with those films. When I was a teenager, those were my MCU and then in 2008, which was what, like six years later, Iron Man comes out and they're like, we're going to do this whole MCU thing. And even by that point, I was like, yeah, okay, I'm, 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 we've got Batman Begins and 2008 was also The Dark Knight came out and I was like, okay, these, these superhero films are good, but now they're getting really popular. And, uh, and I was even getting a bit fatigued then and then cut to 2020, I'm like, I'm done I'm done with superheroes like there's more to there's more to films than superheroes <laughs> no I haven't seen the uh, Jake Jin and horse Prince of Persia Layer down. T fifty nine. Freaky Boy says, I think Avengers is what really kick-started the MCU. Iron Man was just another little experiment that could never happen. I mean, I get that, but at the same time, it was like, I remember in 2008, there was like a lot of hype around that end credit sequence. And then when um, Tony Stark turned up in The Incredible Hulk, everyone was talking about, oh, like they are, they're, they are at least attempting it. And I think you're right that the Avengers was the thing that sealed the deal for a lot of people. They're like, they are really going to do this. Um, but there's so many like films that they could have done in between all uh, that and Endgame or whatever that could have been way more interesting than what they did. Tom says it's a shame to be honest that lots of films now they seem to be big franchises. It feels like we've gone down the rabbit hole of not having as much independent film. Cloverfield is a good example. There are independent films, it's just they're on like Netflix and and stuff now. And it's uh 
it's like the it's cinemas that don't really play them much. You have to go. The, you have to find like really specialty cinemas to really pick up on that on a lot of this. Uh, on the little one, on the little films, because I, like, I went and saw the lighthouse at the cinema, so that was out at cinemas, but it was like not out at the Odeon or, or the View, the big cinemas. It was out in this little place where I live called Picture, the Picture House. Uh, see you later, Derek Porter. Just realised that this I should really move it over a little bit more. Gary says, has anyone seen Cells at work? I think the main voice actress from American English dub would be great at voicing Jess. Uh, no, I haven't seen that. That's sweet that you're thinking of who could voice act. Too much of a maybe too much of a change in the tail. Yeah, that's bad. start to have this foot come up yeah that works and well, I might just add the blue onto this bit actually oh, wrong layer Right. Zion says, so what is happening in this sense, if you don't mind me asking? Well, I can, I can show you. Uh, so the idea in this sequence is you have these uh, Tanistrophius that are hiding in amongst the reeds. So here's one here, stood hiding, and it's like camouflaging in, and there's this shot in the episode which I showed last stream which looks like this where you've got all these reeds and then you can see eventually the uh, Tanistrophia start emerging like showing themselves and then uh, I'm currently animating this sequence here where the one we see here comes out of the reeds and then starts to make itself known and it's going to roar at another one that's next to it 
So I'm going to add, I don't know how many I'm going to add into this shot, but there's going to be quite a few like coming out of the reeds. And then this, the yeah, like I said, the one that uh, we're animating right now, like during this sequence, he's roaring or sort of like hissing at another Tanistrophus that's sort of getting in the way. Because in, in this series, these creatures have been specifically designed genetically to match a modern environment. And the success that they're dumbfounded by is the fact that they actually succeeded in getting these animals, not dinosaurs, sorry, reptiles, um, to adopt the right behaviour for this new environment that they otherwise should be alien to. Oh, thank you, man. Thanks, everyone. They're all saying it's cool. Um, so at the moment, I'm just yeah, I'm animating these these guys and doing each each cell frame. So like as you can see, I've done like this. So you can see each frame. Takes a while to do to get it to be kind of smooth and I haven't even added in um, motion blur or ripples of water around the feet or anything like that yet I'll do that uh, once I've got pretty much everything done that's gonna be a day where I just sit down and do water ripples and stuff and it's gonna take ages but it'll make the scene worth it because I, I want this series to have like lots of detail and make it very rewatchable for people um, I saw um, Facts and Theories, who usually comes to these streams, he's not here today I don't think, but he posted his review up on YouTube of the first episode and uh, and he was saying how he's watched the episodes back a few times and it's like, that's, that's yeah, that's what I was hoping for because uh, there's, all, there's loads of detail in, in this series that you might otherwise miss the first time because one, you'll be reading the text um, but also there's a lot of visual stuff. It's like a visual storytelling that I think... Like character building with their like... What they're doing and what they wear and stuff like that. And little details like this guy who's going to be hissing at another Tanistrophius as they go next to each other, so... The Eggman says, what sounds do you use to make... For the dinos, do you just slap bird and reptile calls together? Uh, no. So I, I, I do have a sound file uh, archive of sort of generic dinosaur roars from like old movies that are like royalty free. But um, which you, if you know those roars, you'll recognise them. Um, but I do tend to edit them in Audacity so they can at least sound more unique and I'll mix them together and all that sort of stuff so there's, they're not exactly because a lot of people will just slap the standard roars together or whatever um, but in this I wanted to blend those so I do have that but uh, I do some of the sounds myself so I'll make uh, like you know that I don't know if you've seen the behind the scenes of Jurassic Park uh, documentary but where like Spielberg is doing all the raptor noises for the actors I do that sort of stuff into a mic and then I'll edit that in Audacity to make it sound uh, like a dinosaur. Like, you know, drop the pitch, add an echo, change the reverb, add another sound over it and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but for things like... I'll use things that you might not know would be a dinosaur or, or an animal sound. So like in episode 2 there's a, a whole sequence with a dimetrodon that features a few times and the sounds I use for the Dimetrodon are me moving a chair at my work and just recording that because I moved it and I was like, if I edited that in in Audacity or something, that would sound like a dinosaur. So I, so I, um, uh, yeah, so that's a chair. <laughs> there you go, you can see this guy's raising his head now. So I want one more with this head. 
You can see he's got his eye fixed on the prize. There you can see in the distance. So this will be number 60. Uh, Tom says, I really love the idea that the crew at the Petri dish are on their own, facing off against things like this now. With comms gone, they are going to be in big trouble. Excited to see how they factor in. One of the reptile raptors calls is a tortoise mating, if I remember correctly right. Yes, yeah, when the raptors make that classic, like, bob, bob sound or whatever it is, that's mating turtles. that to be there. Alright, new, new layer again. And this time the head's going to be raising even more. Hello, never not so clever at this. He says, what frame is this? This is numbers, well, animation cell 60 that we're up to. Well, actually, I wanted to, because it's raising its head up, I figured probably be good if we have its body start to like raise up like it's proud Eggman said, imagine being the guy who had to stick a microphone next to a bunch of mating turtles. So now we're going to add that foot down. Uh, this one, it's lifting this leg up so we can do that. And even this one in here, it's lifting up. And then its back foot has gone into the water on the other side. So you can't really see that, but. Michael Caine survived the horrors of Jaws 4, but he got a house or a pool out of it. I think it was a pool, wasn't it? Seeker says, I've got to get some rest after an all nighter, but I'm distracted by this brilliant Tanistrophius camo concept. Keep up the good work and see you later. Cheers, man. I will see you later. Thanks for popping by. Sixty is damn fine progress for a solo studio, so never not so clever at this. Okay, so let's see, does this look good? Yeah, I just need to change the back a little bit. It's also putting its weight down, so just wanted to have its back arched just a little bit more. 
I might even actually move its leg, its back leg here, up a little bit, so it's not such a stark difference. Oop. I just need to grab the blue bit of the back leg, like that, and maybe put that like Wolf Gaming says hi again. Hello, Wolf Gaming, for the second time. How are we doing? Big Shark says also, did they change Jaws to PG because I remember it being rated R? Do you mean the first Jaws? As far as I'm aware, it's it's always been PG in the UK. But then again, now you've said that, I'm like, well, I do kind of remember it being R when I was a kid, but. I don't know if that was just me thinking that rather than knowing it. Okay, so let's see, what does that look like? Perfect, right, so let's move on to colouring this one in. See, we've got, we've got this, we have got this down now. Uh, Titan of Surfaces, so you said that every creature has a commercial purpose. Dimetrodons with the logo and the Tanistrophe is acting as guard dogs. I wonder what the other creatures' commercial purposes are. Um, not just commercial, I said that they're, um, they're a metaphor for how dinosaurs have been used in all media. Like, all across every single uh, type of dinosaur in media. Um, Tom Jurassic says dumbest thing I've done today pause the live stream as I grabbed lunch <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're alright man you grab your lunch it's more important what's your favourite hadrosaur jack says K Gary Pfeiffer um, Shuntungasaurus is that how you pronounce it I don't know that's that's just off the top of my head because that's one of the big ones that's in my uh, in my book. That has a big action sequence with the T Rex. Uh, Titan of Serpents asks, "What do you mean by that exactly?" Well, you think like how um, in like. Think of all like old dinosaur movies, how the dinosaurs acted and how they were portrayed. And then you think that there's ones that were designed to appeal to kids. There was one like Barney and uh, um, uh, Denver the dinosaur. There's uh, the ones that were designed to be looked at as animals in film, but they were com they were met turned into like. Like the, I think the uh, Dilophosaurus in Jurassic Park was like not accurate, but it was like designed to be this like cool dinosaur that would make people remember it. You've got like the the T Rex as a character in Jurassic Park. You've got the Indominus Rex being like that's a commercialized creature. You've got the intelligent ones and the Raptors. You've got the military use of them in Jurassic World. Uh, all that kind of stuff. You got the monsters of the dinosaurs in like King Kong and all that sort of stuff. So every the way dinosaurs have been used in the entertainment industry is sort of I was like, what could I do to these dinosaurs to make it different? And the best thing I could come up with, because dinosaurs have been used forever in movie, is basically 
think why not do everything every single every single thing they've ever done to dinosaurs but let's put do it in one thing or at least or at least have nods to it so you know I, I hope that makes sense it's like it's difficult because you have to look at how dinosaurs were marketed across the across well the century that dinosaur media has been around okay oh god no don't merge visible merge those okay so that is that one All right, now what we're going to do is turn the head back slightly. So we do want this one. Because what I want to do is, it's like it's, I don't want to tilt his head, so his head gets a little bit of like a, a little bit of a 3D effect, a little bit. But with the with the use of the dinosaurs in this is like I wanted to do the do, like I said, uh, it's, it's really hard to like quantify while I'm trying to concentrate on doing this. But um, obviously I'm a bit tired as I mentioned. Um, so like the Indominus Rex is a, is a good like really clear example. They took. Uh, they took the Indominus Rex and used it as a kind of metaphor for how dinosaurs were being looked at by like the creators of Jurassic Park 3 for one example because like the the Spinosaurus was there to replace the T-Rex in a kind of cynically cold corporate move like we need something bigger than a T-Rex that we can market to kids and it's going to come in and kill the T-Rex and uh, and then that's the new that's the new toy we can sell in a way. And then the Indominus Rex was sort of like a a rebuttal to that in Jurassic World by having the very story of the Indominus be the it's essentially the story of the Spinosaurus, but instead of being in the real world story like the Spinosaurus' backstory is in the real world you know they wanted to sell a new toy to kids and they wanted a new big very marketable dinosaur that could rival the T-Rex in the it goes in universe in Jurassic World where they have the Indominus B you know as Wu says it's bigger than a T-Rex and all this sort of stuff and he he's basically speaking as the as if he's on the board for Jurassic Park 3 that's the way I look at it and I was like, well, how could I do that, but in a different way than what we've seen before? Because if not, I am, I'm just going to be repeating the message in the exact same way it's been said, which is kind of redundant, but I can kind of say it from a new angle. So then I was reading Michael Crichton's book Next, and I've always had this in my head of this moment where he talks about sea turtles with like company logos on their shells that have been genetically engineered. To have those on and I was like yeah that's such a cool idea I was like if I ever get the chance I'd love to write a story that actually involves that and like because Michael Crichton only had a character talk about the idea they didn't actually like um, do it or anything and um, and so I was like well what if there's a story where someone actually does that like to an animal so here we are with Dino Defenders but that's also carrying on the notion of uh, the Indominus Rex and how people viewed uh, viewed that dinosaur or that fictional creature. Uh, see you later, Freaky Boy John Dog. <laughs> Dino.
the Eggman says, Barney lives on human suffering and nobody can convince me otherwise. The pain of parents keeps him alive. Do you know what? Here's a fun fact about myself that's not very fun and not very facty. Uh, <laughs> no, it is a fact. Um, I've never seen a Barney episode. Never even watched one as a kid. I've seen like maybe one clip years ago, but yeah, I've never actually watched Barney. Obviously, I've seen the clips in Jurassic Park 3, but um, never actually never actually bothered to, to watch the, the old purple the purple beast Tyne of Serpent says I've never read Next before I'm intrigued Next is a really good book by Crayon it's really thought provoking it's one of my favourites um, I do need to reread it again I think that's the one that mentions Biosyn. Like it's like they he name drops, but or is it Biogen? Like he mixes Biosyn and Ingen from Jurassic Park in it, and has this company called Biogen. Just realised I made a bit of a mistake. You know, dinosaurs in media, it's been going on for so long. It's its just ridiculously hard to do anything new with them. So Dino Defenders, I'll admit, has been a bit of a challenge with trying to come up with new and inventive ways of humans and dinosaurs interacting. And I really do hope, especially by the end of episode four, that you guys will be like, okay, this, this I haven't seen anything like this before. Probably, actually. Uh, Big Shark asks, is there anything else in the background you're not telling us, Jack? There's... A load of stuff in the backgrounds that I'm not telling you. <laughs> There's no, no, like, it's not really dinosaurs. There's no, like, you, no more secret dinosaurs hidden in the background at the moment. But, uh, but there's loads of stuff in the backgrounds. There's even stuff in the foregrounds that are, like, right up in your face in some episodes that are gonna be, like, really eye-opening when you see episode 4 you're going to be like, oh my god, I've got the context for that now and what that means ok, let's see, I think this works better now because it looks like it's so the next few frames, it's body's going to turn and start to uh Head towards the camera. But there's Big Shark, there's something that I'm... Have you fully... Here's a little task for you, Big Shark. I know you like uh, looking at, 
the stuff. How many maps of the Petri dish have you seen in the series? There's a question for you. I know I posted the map on my Instagram. Uh, but have you, uh, have you have you really studied the maps, Big Shark? Have you really studied them? Michael Pierce says, "Hey Jack, just got." Uh, time to finally catch up with the latest episode of Dino Defenders and man wow what a cliffhanger absolutely loved it finally sub to your Patreon just wanted to say keep up the awesome work oh, thanks man Michael Pierce finally signed up to the Patreon eh ah so you're, you're ti are you Tinyware is that is that you I believe that is actually isn't it That is you, yeah. Thanks, man, for joining the Patreon. That is so kind. I was like, Tinyware, and I, I, I was like, I know that's someone from somewhere, but I hadn't uh, really had time to really dive in. But yeah, thanks for clarifying. Time of Surface is also apparently the day of the JP novel's release, was also the birthday of the person who studied fact fractals and kind of brought them to our understanding, and there are lots of fractals in the novel. Oh, that's a neat little coincidence. A winky dink. Tom says, I've got to bounce and get back to work, but I'm glad I got to see some of this. Keep chipping away, Jack. We all appreciate what you're doing with this project. Thanks, Tom. That means a lot, man. It's nice to hear that people are people are out there enjoying it. And uh, Michael Pierce, like, I'm glad you finally watched episode three. I think that's that's the one that's the one episode I think that, you know, because it's got such a cliffhanger, I think people really do. As soon as they see episode three, I think they're like, "Okay, this is different and uh, more." I hate this word, but I'm going to use it uh, because I can't think of another word better to use. But edgier than what they expect from from what they see in episode one and two, because of the the sort of sudden violence that's in it and the uh, and the way the end plays out I've always said I think episode 3 is the one that will turn people's heads that's, that's one way of putting it Big Shark says well there's one on the radar during the storm I think the other one on the in the lab or Turner's office also one in the hallway Uh, one in the hallway. Where, where's the map in the hallway? <laughs> I'm trying to remember that one. I and I drew this series. Michael says, "How did you guys end up choosing the music at the end of the last episode? It's such a perfect song." Um, that's my one of my best friends from my childhood. Um, he does the Terradome Three Thousand intro music. He he works with me. All the time, we're, we're like we're we're really good friends, me and him. And uh, he's got a band called the Broken Kings, and I was just listening to some of their stuff, and I was like, this song, the lyrics, everything about this song is perfect for the end of episode three of Dino Defenders. And I was like, I have to ask him if I can use it, and so I I did, and he was like, yeah, man, just go for it. And uh, he was like, just make sure you you link the song in the description, and I was like, done. Done. Uh, okay, that's that done. So the head is turning again. Let's let's remember. Um, so I want this head now. Uh, Michael Pierce says absolutely I love the series before episode 3 but that was absolutely something that pushed me from this is awesome to I'm on the edge of my seat see that's awesome that's what I like to hear mm -mm. yeah 
Because I always, I always talk about this in streams. So it's like there's only so much tension I can actually get from this series, I think. So I'm really trying my best to like squeeze every last drop I can from this series of tension. Uh, so I can, so I can really try and grab that atmosphere I'm going for, because it obviously it's a very bright and colourful cartoon, you know. Oh God, and uh, oh, I don't need that one open now anymore. Um, and so I like hearing when people say oh, that it, it, they were on the edge of their seat because it's like, oh yeah, okay, I've achieved my, I achieved my goal with that episode at least, at least for some people. Never not so clever. This says the song resets the tone. I like that description. Um, the idea of putting the song at the end of episode three and not any other episode, apart from when I do the final episode and, and the movie version by like uh, sticking all the episodes together, um, is because I knew one. I knew that the the like as you said the tonal shift at the end of episode 3 is going to be quite poignant so i wanted something to like really let people sit on i did have another song in mind actually which was vastly different in tone um and these musicians i asked for their permission and they did email me back saying what's it for and i mentioned what it was and then they got someone else to message me because they were like yeah okay uh, we're interested and then they sent someone else an email and then they messaged me saying okay uh, can you explain a little bit more about what you're doing and I explained it and then I never heard anything back so I was like well screw you guys I'm going to Drew because he, he's made a song I've just heard it and it's awesome um, but yeah the the reason I'm, I've am i got a song as well is I also knew how long episode 4 is going to take to come out so I wanted to episode 3 to kind of feel like an end like an end point even though it's not like it's sort of the midway point uh, so that's why having a song at the end with the longer credits and everything like sort of hopefully adds to that whole feeling of like okay we're taking a break for a bit while episode 4 gets done and uh, and yeah we can sit on it sit on what we've just watched for a little while Big Shark says the map in that room of the base. Oh, do you mean the under the underground map? Is that what you mean? Also the camera room. Big Shark, you're f there's one you're missing. Let's just put it this way. There's one map you're missing. In episode 3. Never not so clever. This says, well, lives are on the line now. There are stakes. And the Mega Raptor even pays that off. Uh, Michael Pierce says I had to go back and rewatch the ending scene just to make sure I didn't miss something I like so much happened and it felt crazy in the best way it feels like all the stakes are real too I'm glad you aren't shying away from that yeah I wanted to have main characters die and and in a way that hopefully people wouldn't expect so then you're like you don't know who's going to live or die means you should care more for the characters that that you care about and uh, and it just keeps it unpredictable so you're you're along for the journey uh, Michael Pierce says I'm also really happy the Mega Raptor wasn't the only reason there was chaos it was all a domino effect anything else everything uh, it was all a domino effect everything which made it perfect um oh yeah there's <laughs> yeah I don't I don't I don't want to talk about the the other the, there is a lot going on let's just put it that way That's that that cloud at the end oof you don't want to mess with that Big Shark says am I missing one in the garage or the helicopter no, uh, there's one, there's two in uh, buzzes, in comms.
So uh, here's a good plan. Here's a good idea, uh, Big Shot. Just compare the two that are in comms. Gary Five says, "Do the animals break out after or during the storm?" Uh, I'm not going to say because that's episode four stuff. Obviously, you know how the Tanistrophius get out because you saw that uh, tower smash into the into the side of their paddock. So. The one that Hunter rides down and jumps out of and Turner falls from. That smashes right into this paddock. <laughs> T-Rex Entertainment. E, Titan of Serpents. E. Is that the new F's in the chat? E's in the chat. He's in the chat, guys, for animating dinos. Big Shark says, oh yeah, Buzz, while he's playing pool. Mm-hmm. Titan EA. <laughs> Gary Five says, Titan EA Sports, it's in the game. Oh no, what am I doing? Never not so clever at this says, My money is on Buzz being a secret ex military hard ass when the shit hits the fan. Well, you'll have to wait and see. And I just hope you're not disappointed with whatever I do. this work see the tail's not right that's what's wrong with this one Like, if you think episode 3 was crazy, you wait till episode 4. In episode 4. There are things that happen in episode 4 that are going to make your brain melt. Gary Fife says, are the Tanistrophius babies or juveniles or you made them small to selective breeding? No, they're, um, they're, they're full size. think yeah okay so we're on 62 uh, they're this big if I if I open up the file that I did the um, this is what I did I did a drawing of the Tanistrophus in 2018 this one as my concept for what it is and uh, like if it was you know detailed I've changed certain things about the design because they look like you can see the difference in head shape now like they look more like this um, but how big they are they're like this big if they were to stand up Ha! 
how big are the reeds. The reeds in the background are different now in the final one. So if I go back to the edit, I've changed the size of the reeds in the background. These cattail reeds are huge. They're like this. But the ones here, this layer here, that's in the... F this one that I'm blinking on and off. Uh... Uh, the ones on the right hand side basically um, they're close to the foreground they're in they're closer to the camera big shark says how close are you to that goal uh, which goal is that what goal are you speaking about B what are you talking about laddie Oh, the Patreon. Uh, I have to say thank you to Tom, who just joined the Patreon. Um, oh my god, how far am I from my goal on Patreon? Uh, I don't... Let me see. I'm not. I'm um, well. They they used to say it in a percentage, like how how much percent are you to your goal, but it doesn't tell me that. So I don't really want to reveal what it is. But um, it was last time I looked, it was thirteen percent. So <laughs> it's like a long way to go, really. Let's put it this way: if Eight, if I could convince 800 people to do tier 1, like the tiniest tier on there, that's my goal met, basically. And if they held on to doing that for as long as it took for me to complete, but if, if that was, if I'd made that goal, I would basically be at home to work on it all the time until it's finished and then some like working on the uh, the movie version and any other little bits if anyone wanted to see but that's why I'm always saying like share the Patreon because it's more about like uh... oh Big Shark you helped me out already man you do massive help Uh, Hello Delta asks what kind of dinosaur is that? It's a reptile. It's the Tanistrophius. Um but yeah, that's that's it. It's like I see all these you know, people doing Patreons and Kickstarters for other things and it's like I pay for some people's Patreons as well. But it's like, it is really difficult to sell an idea to people if you're a small YouTuber and, and no one knows who the hell you are. And you've got like this grand idea. So I've found the best way of getting people to sort of take notice so far, and it's a slow process, like a really slow process, is just to do it. Like just work on it and more people turn up. Gary Fife says, I think... It's more exciting if the Megaraptor or Megalosaurus eat some of the Tanistropius. Hmm. That is an interesting idea. I haven't heard of that. What did it look like in real life? Well, I'll open that file one more time. 
So up here, I've got the skeleton, like the the bones of what they found. So it looked like this, apparently. Like ridiculously long, thin neck, tiny little head at the end, uh, and four legs, like this. Obviously, this is a sort of kind of caricature Dino Defenders version where it's uh, probably going to do things that's not accurate whatsoever <laughs> to the to the the actual creature, and uh, and it'll probably act, uh, move in ways that are not accurate to the actual creature. But we don't know what the actual creature was really like, so who knows? Do actually want to make the head a little bit smaller. Never not, never not so clever. This is the Tannies have the dead evil eyes of geese. Yeah. Okay, that's that done. And then... Keep that ahead again. I might see after this one what it looks like in the edit. So I'll move all what I've done into the edit just to see what it looks like. Make it a little bit bigger because it's meant to be getting closer. Mickey Howard says, this is awesome. Thank you, Mickey. Um, always looking at it like slightly to the left. I should Probably center this <laughs> image. Mickey Howard says, Andrew or Clayton. And your Clayton Floyd body have made my dreams come true with JP franchise. Thank you. Uh, I don't quite know what Clayton E. Floyd means, but thank you very much, Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, it's very kind of you to say, Mickey. Clayton, buddy, is that what he's meant to say? Do you think? Your Clayton's buddy and my dreams contribute to Oh, thank you. Uh, okay. If that's if that's what you meant, that's very kind, and it's very kind anyway. So thank you for the kind words. Thank you for the kind words, Mickey. So I have a hard time spelling. He has a kid in the chair for his pig. Okay. I <laughs> see. I understand all about child care now. As I am a father myself, so it's a uh, it is a uh, is a very beautiful thing to behold. It's very tiring, but it's in extremely life fulfilling. 
and it's so cool. Like it's really cool to like watch these little, this little mind that you've brought into the world start to suss things out and stuff. It's really humbling to watch, and I love being a dad. Katie, Ocarina of Time, 1986. Thank you very much for coming and saying hello. I haven't seen you around here in a while. Let's get this. The tail going down. And then. Get the legs going. Delta Flamestorm says, Will Jurassic Park be your kid's first movie? <laughs> I've already shown her, like, Tarzan. Well, she, as a baby, you know, she she can't really... She doesn't understand what the heck's going on. Um, me and my wife watched all of Malcolm in the Middle, and she sort of caught a bit of that. But we, we've had this... Co we've been having this conversation. Like, we don't want to, like, sh show too much TV, because at such a young age, she only just turned four months. It's like... I don't know what that's going to do to their her, their development of their eyes. So we try not to like have her focus on the TV at all. When I say she watched Tarzan, I mean she was asleep in a bop chair and I watched Tarzan. <laughs> that's basically what I was saying. But she did watch clips of it when she woke up. She was like looking around and she caught the TV and saw the monkeys and that. So Lane says, yes, being a parent. Hello, Lane, by the way. Uh, be one of the hardest and fulfilling jobs out there. I think it's the most, yeah, the most fulfilling job out there. It's so cool. Uh, Never not so clever at this says is Terradome three thousand proper on hold for the meantime. N uh, it's. <sighs> Yeah, kind of. Like, I do... I will... So, okay. Me and my wife have been talking about our next place we want to move. So this is our first... Because we're homeowners, right? We own our home. We bought it. Um, but it's only a... It's a two-bedroomed uh, place. And so... If we want another kid, we're going to have to get another place. And, um, and we're already itching to do that anyway because we want a house. Uh, and so we're um, we're really talking at the moment about like where we'd want to live and all this sort of stuff. And the Terradome set's still out there, and I and I still do want to make um, I still do want to make episodes. But it's obviously it's just time. So like I wouldn't say the Terradome episodes are entirely on hold because. Um, just because if I could, if I had the time, I would be making them. But uh, but I just don't because I've got work. It's more work than the baby. Like the baby, I can work around. Um. Oh, I don't know what's going on with this leg. Why did I do that leg? Oh, you know what? Change that again. So, yeah, again, like it. Uh, it's all, it's, I, I'm thinking after I finish Dino Defenders, I'll turn my Patreon into a Terradome one, just to be like, if you want to help support my videos on YouTube, you can uh, you can support the Patreon or whatever. Uh, to help keep it going, and then if I was to meet the goal, yeah, that would be basically be. My job, I'd be the same as sort of Clayton doing YouTube full time, and then you'd see some real videos come out of me. But at the same time, I'm sort of limited to time, so I'm kind of working 
with what I can do. Uh, Mikey says you and Clayton need to do a video together. Uh, Clayton was in the chat last live stream saying that we should do a video about Dino Defenders, so maybe there will be one in the future. We we were recording one the other night, but um, it didn't turn out how we were expecting because we were talking about a subject that sort of just we were just like, oh, we don't really want to talk about this, so we ended up just catching up, and uh, and so. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll probably do something soon, I can imagine. Never not so clever at this is. This channel has a few Clayton and Jack reviews archived from earlier in the COVID days. There's quite a few. If you go into my channel and write um, and go into the video section and then cert, put change the videos to oldest first and then start scrolling, you're going to see videos with me and Clayton where we play the aisle, where we play Overwatch together, where we uh, we discuss nostalgia in Jurassic Park. We, there's all sorts on this channel with, uh, with old Clayton. Right, so let's just have a look. Hmm, a bit of a froggy leg going on. You know what? I don't like that. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. Persist. Katie says, yes, he does have a very Italian last name. Talking about Clayton. I'm also Italian. My dad's name is Franco. Okay, you're talking about Clayton's last name. Uh, I live on the moon. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I'm English. I live on the moon. If I go outside and just bite the ground, you know, it's it's cheese. It's just a nice bit of Wensleydale cheese. Nice bit of Shropshire blue. Shropshire blue. Lovely. to change the neck <laughs> never not so clever this is I heard you need the right trousers to get to the moon cheese yes I've heard that as well All right that's good right is his neck getting longer? <laughs> I swear, I'm looking at this uh, this Tanistropius. That is, that is one long neck. How long is the neck in the first frame? Oh yeah, that's about right. The tail is much longer in that one, but the thing about tails in this is I kind of like the idea because like you're seeing them from the side angle and all that sort of stuff. But they might not look the same length all the time. It's all about that animation. It's all about when they come to life, then you can see how it works. But we'll do that. After I finish this one, I'm going to dump what I've done today in the edit, and we're just going to have a quick look at what I've done so far, just to see how far through the frame we're at. Because this guy's not going to walk off screen or anything. Uh, he's only going to walk to the end of where I've got the frame set to, and then I'll start working on another Tanistropius in this same shot. I'll probably do the one that he, like, bumps into. Delta Flamestorm said, What would you do if it turned out dinosaurs didn't go extinct? Um, Probably... I probably wouldn't be surprised. Uh, because the Earth is full of crazy craziness. I don't know. I like when I saw a humpback whale in real life uh, when we went on this when we were in um, Friday Harbor just off the 
coast of Seattle. We were there for a friend's wedding, and then we went whale watching. And um, we saw this humpback whale, and even though it was like way off in the distance, we saw its tail and everything come out of the water. And I just got this sense of like, whoa, like the, the, the idea that this animal was underneath our boat really made me feel small. And so if a dinosaur was, if dinosaurs were alive, I think I'd be, I'd be cool and I'd want to know like what's going on with them or, you know, all about, all about them. But I don't think I would get any sort of new feeling from it, if you know what I mean. Like, I don't think I would get an Alan Grant going to collapse on the grass and faint kind of feeling. There might be some people out there who are, who would be like that, but I don't I don't think I would because I'm already amazed by the the animals that we have today, um, and the crazy shapes and sizes and behaviours that they already do. That like dinosaur for me is like not really anything different. Uh, see you later, Mikey. He says, "Try to have the best year." I have. I've had a child. I've had the best year of my life. I know 2020 sucks for a lot of people, unfortunately, but for me, 2020 was the best year of my life. A weird year, and continues to be a weird year, but as soon as I saw my daughter, man, everything changed for the, for the better. Delta Storm says, or asks, what if there were dinosaur fossils with, and they were found on Mars when we go there? And then uh, Never Not So Clever at this said, now that's a book concept, Storm. Um, have you guys heard of my friend Michael Tharm's Life on Mars short film that he's working on? If you just YouTube Life on Mars, is it Life on Mars? Oh no, I'm going to have to... I've probably butchered it, haven't I? Sorry, Michael, if you're watching this back in the future. <laughs> uh, let me have a look. Wildlife on Mars. That's it. Look up Wildlife on Mars by M.L. Tharm. And watch his trailer for that. Actually, I can dump it in the chat. One second. There you go. Hopefully that will work. Check that out. Uh, Lane Walden says, It's awesome that you chose the Tanistrophius and you're doing such a great job with the design. I love how... If it wanted to, it could just sink back and disappear into the reeds. Mmm, yeah. That's the idea. Uh, okay, let's get the nail colour. Actually, I might just do one more before we dump it in the edit because I want to get this front leg down. He's gonna walk. Um, so we've got this kind of awkward task now of he's gonna turn, but then he's gonna start to walk towards us. And the sort of camera. 64. Let's make it a little bit bigger. 
I'm gonna tilt it a little bit more. Like so. Uh, see you later, Gary. Thanks for popping by. Never not so clever at this is the hiding in the reeds is one of those Crichton esque wildlife adaption details I personally just love, and it gives extinct animals personality. Yeah, it definitely, like, I can't even remember when I came up with the idea of it. I think it was because I saw the shape of its body. And I was like, you know, if that, and I think it was even um, the image in this file here. I think it was this image that I saw, and I was like, imagine if that was like hiding in long grass. And then I ch and then I thought, but it's got the thing on the top of its head. So then I was like, then I drew in the background. You can see this red line. I drew that roughly, and I was like, imagine if it was just sat in the reeds, like that, with its head up. With its eyes shut, and they look out for prey by just like standing in plain sight. And I was like, "That's it. That's the winning. That's the winning thing. That's what it should do." And here we are, years later. Two years later, or well, just over two years later, I'm finally animating them. <laughs> uh, okay. Right, another new layer. Lane Walden says, I love these those kind of ideas. And Titan of Serpent says, again, they would fit perfectly on Skull Island, right with the mother long legs, camouflaging bamboo legs. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It's funny you say that because I don't think I even actually thought about, maybe that was in my subconscious, but I didn't even think about those camoufl camouflaged bamboo legs. When I came up with the Tanistrophius, even though I must have come up with this, well, it was, I was designing it in December, oh, ugh, September of 2018, so I would have seen Skull Island at that point. So who knows? Maybe that was still floating around in my unconscious mind at that point. Big Shark says, I also just wanted to thank you again for the infant tier. Hope you have fun designing the one I picked. That's a really cool uh, dinosaur, by the way. I can't wait to draw it. Um, I hadn't heard of it, actually. So that's uh, it's interesting. Um, I understand you're busy currently with other things. I hope it turns out good. Um, yeah, I, I don't know when I'm going to be able to work on it this week, even. But I will I will get it to you as soon as I can, man. Katie says, love the Pterodome intro, by the way. It always reminds me of Red Dwarf. I love Red Dwarf. It's one of my favourite shows ever. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do videos in that style of, like, coming from space.
that and Mystery Science Theater 3000 and Thunderbirds and all sorts that was like one of the reasons I was like oh if I make videos I'll I'll do it from space rather because a lot of people did their like videos in front of their like DVD shelf or whatever and I was like I've seen a million YouTubers do that and maybe that's a winning formula but I'll do it from in space but that um, the music in the intro is done by Drew who did that last song in Dino Defenders as I mentioned earlier Never not so clever. This is I discovered Red Dwarf via Robot Wars. Yeah, good old Robot Wars. Cray Charles. Right. I remember I discovered Red Dwarf before um, Robot Wars, uh, but I didn't properly watch it until my friend will bought the they when they released red dwarf on dvd they released this box set called just the shows and it was seasons one two three and four and for some whatever reason right he let me borrow them and for whatever reason i had this i had these loads of uh this load of um christmas lights in this like tubing it was like this plastic clear tubing and it got really warm. It didn't get hot. It just got really, really warm. And for whatever reason, I decided to get under a quilt after school one night when he let me borrow this this Red Dwarf box set. And I binged the entire thing. Or maybe, no, maybe, I bin if I remember correctly, I binged seasons one and two in one night and then seasons three and four the next night after school. But I did it, I curled up on the floor in front of my TV in my bedroom, in a quilt, but I'd wrapped these Christmas lights all around me, like underneath, so I was like, heated underneath this quilt, so I was doubly warm. And then uh, and then I sat there with a cup of tea in front of me, and I kept refreshing this cup of tea whenever it ran out, and then get back under the quilt and get all snug and cosy, and then I'd just watch all these Red Dwarf, and that was when I completely fell in love with it because it whenever I watch it now it reminds me of being warm <laughs> like that cosy and I believe it was winter time so like it was dark out really early and I was like oh I'm gonna hunker down and watch Red Dwarf but I do remember it being on TV when I was a kid Red Dwarf and Tea. Yeah, that is very British of me. But Red Dwarf's like miniatures and their uh, spaceships and stuff, They're, they might look kind of um, like kit bashed and stuff, which they are, and that's part of the appeal of the show. But it, when it came to making my YouTube channel, it was really Mystery Science Theater 3000 which made me think I can actually do what I'm, I want to do. Because if you've ever watched that show, the miniature work in that, like that's even worse. <laughs> and it's got this real charm to it where it, like you can really tell that they've just made it on a really small budget. And, uh, and I was like, okay, that and Red Dwarf, that's what's going to make me make the videos. There's no like particular subject for the Terradome episodes, it's just sometimes I'll release a video and it'll come from the set of the Terradome and be set in space and part of that playlist of videos that are called the Terradome 3000 episodes, but like there's no structure in terms of uh, how serious someone should take it, because we're, we're always talking to the camera and then we won't be talking to the camera and it's like it's just all over the place Never not so clever, they said the States aired Red Dwarf and Old Doctor Who on PBS, the public broadcasting service back before Doctor Who was soccer mum soccer mom popular. Um that's cool to hear. Did you have you ever seen the uh 
lame American pilot for Red Dwarf. You right? Yeah. Can you hear her? I don't know. No, Maybe. <laughs> is she is she alright? Yeah, she's fine. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> um Yeah, the Americans tried to they did a pilot of their own version of Red Dwarf. And it's like them trying to do British humour and it's it's awful. It's so cringy. Katie says, I had a crack at clay animation because of the trapdoor, if anyone remembers that show. Don't you open that trapdoor! <laughs> yeah, I used to I used to watch a few episodes of that early, really early in the morning on Channel 4 for me. It was probably... It was probably shown like in different times or whatever, but like that was when I watched it. It's on YouTube, I believe. Never not so clever at this. The uh, the American Red Dwarf pilot. Okay, so where did we we was it fifty seven we got up to? Fifty seven. Look at that. So let's basically save what we've done. And again, this is like kind of the boring part because we have to save as. Have you ever dreamed that a dinosaur killed you? I remember a dream where I died like Dita says Big Shark. Uh, no, but I've had. Oh, hang on. How come I've got 58 already in there? Wait, have I already done? Let's go over to editing. I think I might have already saved a couple of these. 57 and 58. What the hell? <laughs> I didn't even realise. I'd already saved a couple. I'd forgotten what I'd done. We'll put 50. Ah, no. That's going to bugger it all up. Oh, no, it won't. That's good. See, we're just trying to get to the end of this, basically, with this guy. So it's going to be a little while as yet, I believe. 58. Right, so let's go back to Photoshop. We don't need 58 and 57 then, so 59. Save as. Hello, Jacob. Um, yeah, I've had lots of dreams of being like stalked by dinosaurs and xenomorphs and all that sort of stuff. Like, I've had dreams about that, but I've never had one where I've actually died. The most recent one I remember, I was trapped in a shed, like a proper little wooden garden shed, and there was a T Rex outside, like trying to peer in, and I was hiding in amongst the shovels. <laughs> like,. They look in. <laughs> that was probably a few months ago. Never not so clever at this. Is. There was a local Cleve Cleveland show called The Big Chuck, or Big Chuck and Little John. That was sort of tried the Mystery Science Theater thing. It became sort of the between the commercial show. They still showed a bunch of classic monster flicks. Oh, cool. Okay, so we're going to bunch. That down. Okay, 63. Okay, 
I was going through my notes on episode four the other day and uh, and then comparing what backgrounds we've painted on streams and ones I've got done away from streams and all that sort of stuff. And I think once I've got the whole Tanistrophia scene done, um, we're actually sort of set for doing a lot of human work. Like there's a lot of shots that I'm actually pretty much done because I've got the backgrounds done. I just need to add in the characters and we've there's a lot it, we basically what I'm saying is there's going to be a good jump in a chunk of stuff for episode 4 that will get done pretty quickly which was nice still nowhere near the end but because uh, there's a lot more a lot more dinosaur animation to do <laughs> like oh there's so much right okay so let's move over to the edit and let's add in Oh, where did we get up to? Was it 58? So, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64. Okay. Titans of Ser Titan of Serpent says, due to their long snaky necks, you could almost describe the Tanistrophius as a snake in the grass. Exactly, man. Exactly. And also, like, isn't the term snake in the grass? Let me look this up because I want to make sure because this this that might be perfect. Uh, perfect. Uh, idioms. That's what it's called. Uh, snake in the grass. Yeah, Snake of the Grass is a sneaky or despised person, a treacherous person, or one who frays friendship with the intent to deceive. So isn't that quite fitting for the Tanistrophius that uh, masks itself as a reed? Like when you say it's a snake in the grass with these long necks, it has more meaning than that because it's, uh, it's deceptive as well, which is what the term snake in the grass means. So you're right. You've you've made a very observant uh, thing here. So here we go. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, I think I need to shorten them a bit. His head goes a bit big there. Maybe I need to tweak those frames. But what we need to do, yeah, these are these are a bit too big. These these frames here they need to be a bit smaller to get smoother animation. Okay, let's see what it looks like now. Okay, it's just when its head turns there. Let me save this and then go back into Photoshop. Uh, and then I can close that. And then open up the files that I need, which is... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go, so one. I think its head needs to just be tweaked just a little bit smaller here. It just looks a bit odd. That's all. It's just slightly off. So if I just tweak its head just a little bit. Never not so clever at this says that is solid gold, Jack. Well thank you very much, man. 
I mean, imagine what this is going to look like with several of them moving on screen at once. You never know. You're not going to know where to look. It's going to be so much detail, man. Okay, so save that. Okay, 51. Yeah, look how look how big the head is there. Look, that looks kind of funny. Yo, funny head. I like that it looks like it's going <laughs> with its eyebrow, like <laughs> it's lifting its eyebrow. Oh, what have I done? Do 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 we do we do we okay save that yeah look at that, that that that's the one that was throwing me off the most I think thing is I'm also going to add motion blur to these ones uh, when I come to do the oh god when I come to do the real detail so when I add motion blur in that will obviously blur a lot of the detail so so maybe its head won't look so weird when it's blurry. Here's the little at the front goblin face. Looks like a little uh it really reminds me of something and I'm those char is it the characters from Noddy? <laughs> Did you remember that old kid show Noddy? <laughs> there was these like uh troll guys who uh, used to be the villains of the show. It reminds me of those. And that's really pulling from my Nostat or from my childhood because uh, I have not seen Noddy since I was <laughs> a little kid. I used to have this VHS of it. Noddy, the little man with a red and yellow car. We get to watch all that sort of crap again when, uh, when my daughter grows up. Noddy, Noddy. <laughs> That's better. Uh, see you later, Delta Films. You enjoy your schoolwork. You, uh, I, I hope you have fun with it. Big Shark says, Noddy, I remember that. <laughs> Noddy. Okay, it's just a subtle tweak to the head on a few frames, and then that should fix what makes it look a bit weird to me. So, save that, open up the video pad again, and head back to it. Okay, that should work. Yeah, just let it all render. Katie says, my kids have all liked Pingu and they found it hilarious, even the bigger ones. Pingu's like timeless, that's, that's where it's at. It's because Pingu's like a little rebel. I I used to love the episode where he like wheeze on the floor when I was a kid. Yeah, that's bad. There's still a bit of a janky. Oh, I see. Because there's a a frame that's much bigger. Oh, there's a few frames that are much bigger than the others. Especially this one. My word.
I was like, why does it? Why is he not walking so smoothly? time something about that bit there what's wrong with that wait let me what you can do in this is if I oh god no there's a way of highlighting uh, oh no I don't want to do that got to catch those frames as laying yeah there's a way of is it like this yeah here we go so if I do that and then I click loop it should play in a loop that section Yeah, it looks okay to me actually. You just need the yeah the motion blur. That's what I'm missing, especially when it raises its head. It needs the motion blur like the blur going up because it's raising its head quite fast. Okay. All right, save that and go back to Photoshop and we will continue. Wait, how? Oh, actually. So, edit, how many frames is it theoretically going to take for me to get to the end? So, it's seven, three seconds. So, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nine, and about another twenty frames. <laughs> and then we'll be done okay so maybe this is not going to be done by today but <laughs> uh, well we better get going then let's do this I can actually cut the whole neck out of this guy now I think because that's not really going to move oh no actually no tell a lie not the whole neck the top half where it goes straight so now this if I make it bigger like so and then get the new layer for the lines this will be T65 alright Yeah, the tail changing direction looks like it shrinks, but it does, uh, it's because it's like the way you're seeing it. I'll, I'll remember to lengthen it again. <laughs> okay, so. I have to make sure that the seam is okay so you don't see the cut off. <laughs> Again, my daughter's having fun. I can tell what's going on. My wife's got her in the bouncy chair. And uh, as I said last stream, she's like found her voice. Okay, let's get the body right. Maybe if I get the body right, I can get the neck right.
was I like before? I had the weight going down. Never not so clever at this is what children's property should get a dark and gritty reboot. Um Well, Disney owned the rights to Home Alone and Predator, and I've always wanted to see a film where it's called Home Alone versus Predator. And you have like Kevin McAllister. Well you have another kid, it doesn't really matter because obviously uh actually no, Macaulay Culkin can play it now, can't he? Uh he's like older. And then this predator hears about, you know, his uh, his excellent skills at hunting the uh, the criminals. So the predator wants to like claim Kevin's skull. That's what happens. That's what I want. That's what I want to see. Oh, I just heard my wife say, are you ready for a nap? To our daughter. <laughs> I love the routine, it's so funny. So then that foot can come up. And yeah, I think that works. The tail is going under the water again. Katie says, I enjoyed my first child when I was little. She is turning 16 on Tuesday. The years go by so quick. Well, wow. Yeah, I can't imagine what my daughter's going to be like at 16. I can't even imagine what the world's going to be like in 16 years' time. Like, technology and stuff's moved so quick, and social media has just destroyed everything in the last, like, <laughs> few years. It's got people so addicted. He says on social media, that is YouTube. Um, but yeah, no, I can't imagine what uh, what's going to be going on then. Actually, I want to up the size of this foot. So we're going to start bringing it towards us. And then it's going to be bringing its leg forwards. You're right. Oh, you need her giraffe. Oh, that's alright. Oh, poor girl. She has this little giraffe that she likes to hold when she's napping. Parenting in the age of social media era seem simply sounds harrowing. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that social media evolves into something completely different and not as 
idiotic as it is today and as not as shallow as it is today by the time my daughter's old enough to want to start well I don't know we've, we've been talking about this we don't know when we're exactly gonna introduce her to the internet <laughs> it's like being very cautious about it because I don't think people know the sort of psychological effects it has properly. I don't think we've seen the the lasting effects of that yet. So we're just sort of kind of being being cautious about it. I just realised a mistake I've made with this guy. The head. Let me get rid of this neck. This this is looking bad. Get rid of that. Move this up like that, and then grab the head. It should start moving. Like that, it should be. Maybe that should be a little bit smaller. Just a little bit. This should go up like that. Yeah. Katie says, just be open and honest with kids. I always have, we have three girls and boys, and even the older ones have been good with social media and stuff. Just be aware and knowing what's that there helps. Yeah, I mean, if I'm honest, it's not so much like, I mean, it's a big factor of it is like what they can be exposed to in terms of like, what they see and you know what people say and all that sort of stuff that's 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 obviously a concern but the, the, the thing I'm talking about is more the way of thinking it can it can instill on people like I'm worried about you know the the idea of like Instagram for one example is like this like you get this culture of people who take photos of their own face day in and day out constantly and and I don't know what that does to people it's like even YouTube like I'm saying this and I've got the camera on I'm on I'm on live to you know essentially strangers I have no idea like what the lasting effects would be on someone if they did this from a very young age because when I was younger uh I was making movies and stuff like this. I've always been doing this ever since I was a kid. So this isn't, but that was before social media. So I got the sort of, I sort of knew the craft. But if you're like learning this sort of stuff, and you have to do it in front of an audience, or I don't know, there's there's a lot to it. Like Twitter is the worst. I don't, I, I, because Twitter's just like headlines arguing against headlines. There's no. There's rarely any nuance on Twitter, and it's just a lot of idiocy on there. That's why I'm not on it. Uh, you know, a company is, but I'm not. I don't have a personal account. Yeah, yeah. Never not so clever at this as welcome to the age of thin intelligence, as Michael Crichton would say. Um, I just I just think people get quite shallow if they spend too much time on like social media. They care about things that really you don't need to worry about. They they care about what they what their image is and stuff. Like what their rep what what is my what their reputation is like online and all this sort of stuff. It's like that doesn't matter. <laughs> It's it's all smoke and mirrors. But hey, it might not even be an issue in in uh, by the time my daughter's old enough. It might not be an issue. There'll be something different. That'll be when the rats take over the world. 
like giant, giant like James Herbert's the rats, like giant sewer dwelling mutant rats come out and start attacking the world. It's like, oh god, that's the big threat. Kate says we go outdoors a lot and live by the sea. Yesterday I was gardening and my boys spent the whole day collecting bugs. Much better to be outside. Yeah, exactly. Enjoy the outdoors. Like the good thing about like living in the UK is we have like is it the country code or whatever it's called where like there's this sort of unspoken rule between people where like someone will have like private property but you can walk on that private property as long as you clear up your mess and uh uh and don't and, and shuttle gates that's basically it like a good majority of the UK you can enjoy the countryside because it's it's ours it's 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 everyone's obviously like farmers have their own fields and all that sort of stuff but they they still have walkways around them and that and you can walk through the woods they've it's not like where in places like i guess in america you know if someone says it's private property it's like <laughs> yeah you you don't go on that because they might, you know, shoot you for trespassing or whatever. But in the UK, you're never worried about being shot if you walk on private property because there's, I think it's called the country code. It's, it's something. There's something written. It's not like in law. It might be in law from like ages ago. I'm going to have to do more research on this. But the idea is like it's this unspoken bond between everyone that you own you all own the countryside it's like robin hood days and it's good for kids to like experience that cuz i grew up on my nan and granddad lived in lived out in the countryside and i got to experience growing up on a farm around animals and we used to go around the woods and all that sort of stuff. And uh, I absolutely loved it. Uh, just gonna move this guy's eye over a little bit so he starts to look a little bit more forward. Like obviously people do have private property in the UK. There's like some places you absolutely can't go but like the woods and the general countryside it's like basically owned by everyone so you can just enjoy like there's like if there's like a a hillside you can go I can walk over that hillside if I want to like yeah never not so clever they said bushland Aussie um well th there's a good difference between Australia and the UK as well is we killed all the animals that could kill us <laughs> I say we, I mean like people in the past in the UK, like we took out all the bears and the wolves which some idiots are trying to like reintroduce into it's like into it's like no we took them all out for a reason so you're not so you don't die if you walk outside <laughs> and we don't have like insects that can take us out, nothing like that very fortunate that way so I guess Australia you can walk around, but there's other factors that uh, you got to be aware of. Oh, you snorkel a lot. Nice. Oh, you were saying the Bushland Aussie because uh, Kate, you were saying that uh, she says, I adore your countryside. So green. I'm in half sea, half Bushland. Oh, I see what you're saying. So apologize. I retract. Well, no, I don't. I, I mean, I mean that. Like in Australia, I guess you can walk around, but yeah, it's true. You have to look out for for other other things, insects, rattlesnakes. Is it? Do you have rattlesnakes in Australia? Is it a rattlesnake or is it the black mat? A black 
members or something. I forget what animals you have over there. Uh, yeah, England, because uh, Titan of Service says, well, you got to have some predators for a healthy ecosystem. Well, you have like small predators, uh, really small predators, but um, nothing that can take humans out, <laughs> really. So we're on to Tanistrophia 66. Activate Tanistrophia 66. how this is going to work. I feel like that's too much of a jump. Just trying to work out sort of like how this is going to work because I'm turning his body so like I'm trying to work out in my head what it should look like really. that's going past here. Hmm, that might work. Looks kind of cool. I like drawing the body of this guy. Yeah, alright. Where did we get up to in the edit? What number was that? 64. So we've done one, <laughs> and this is the second since we did that. Oh my god, and we've only got like 20 minutes left of the stream. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Hey, at least next stream you know I'll be working on a different Tanistrophius because I'll be able to finish this guy off between now and the next stream. Uh, there won't be a stream next Sunday, as I mentioned. Well, there, I don't think there will be. But keep an eye out. There, there may be, but I don't. I don't know. 
might be doing something so it's like up in the air at the moment but I'll, I'll let you know if I if I do well you'll know I'll just start streaming but if not it'll be next Tuesday again This is this is fun. I, I like. I've been waiting for a while to finally animate a creature on one of these streams, like fully animate it, and it's just nice to finally be doing that. Because the this can be some of the most tedious stuff to do because you're doing a lot of the same stuff over and over again, like repeating the same image. But doing it on stream has actually been quite uh, less nerve-wracking getting it right. So like when I did the Kentrosaurus Megala Megaraptor fight off stream, I did that before coming back onto streams. Um, around the time my daughter was being born. Not actually on the day, obviously. <laughs> but around like the just before pregnancy and, and, and all that. Um... I was thinking, oh, oh my god, how am I going to do this? Because it's such a crazy fight. I, and I'd never done... That was the craziest amount of animation I'd done for a single frame. And that was really nerve-wracking. But actually doing this on stream is actually helping because I can... Because I'm on a time limit of three hours as well. It's like I'm trying my best to... Uh, get a lot done so you guys can see and be entertained by what you're watching and it's making my mind move a million miles an hour never not so clever this says the water effects for the scene will be fun to make I'm sure uh, yeah I think I'm gonna do like a combination of some of the, like the water effects from after effects and some drawn I'm still working out exactly uh, what I'll do with that Okay, so he's turning. That worked out really well. So now, this next frame, again, I'm going to cut the head out here. And I'm going to make this Slightly bigger. I bring it down because he's stepping. And I'm going to tweak the eye. Just slightly. So sixty seven. Um, and then, right, I'm going to do the body first because I want to make sure and then I can line the neck up. So this is going to be down. Like so. The body is going to be shifted down because he's putting his weight on it. Um, that leg. 
leg is going to be coming around. This one is So, so to add the weight, it's going to be leg lifting up. He's got a little chunky leg now. Yeah, like so. The body goes down. Just basically lower everything. Keep that like that. And then this leg goes. Down that far. I might even make like the water a little bit deeper when on the next frame. Okay, now line up the neck. Oh, actually, I want to move the head over a little bit. I just want to be a bit more subtle than that. Yeah, like that. So now let's line the neck up. Okay, uh, get the colour on it. What was the one we're up to? 50, 64 in there, so. So let's add the colour on. Well, we've got 10 minutes left of the stream. I'm using the pattern to show like the body as well. Her, uh, how the body is turning. Just angle that green bit under the belly a bit so again that adds to the effect of the body twisting around. And the tail I'm actually going to make almost solidly green because the tail's going to be whipping around again once it comes back out of the water. Uh, Never Not So Clever at This says there are a few model animation suits on sale on Steam if you're interested or would you be more keen on uh, Adobe Animation Extension? Do you know what? I, I wouldn't know. I've actually never used those programs so uh, that would have to be something I'd have to try out to um, to see if I like them but 
I think I've got the style of what I like to do down for Dino Defenders, but see, here's the thing though: I don't want to be an animator. This is the thing. Like, the reason I'm making Dino Defenders is to sort of because I like telling stories and I like telling grand stories. And the problem with telling grand stories, if I wanted to make a film of them, they're ridiculously expensive and Hollywood Hollywood isn't going to buy up my ideas. Uh, really. Like, we don't live in that world. So, I'm think I was thinking, you know what? Why not do it myself? And then I won't have to answer to some, like, big studio to get at least the story out how I want it to get out. And uh, and then we'll see where it goes from there. But like I don't want to be an animator, like that's not my career goal. Um I just I'd like I like being like a writer or a person who comes up with sort of ideas for things. Narratives. All that jam. That's that's where uh, that's where I like to be. Okay, so um, put all those together. I see now the leg. I actually maybe want to stretch that further. It kind of looks like he's just sort of standing in the same spot. I'm thinking, what if he steps forward more? Like that. And then that presents an opportunity for the very next frame to really get some animation of the uh, weight coming down. Hmm, okay. Let's see, how does that look? That's much better. Okay, so 65, is that really all we did? <laughs> three more, okay. So let's add in those three to the edit and then we'll see uh, what it looks like. Oh, I also do need to cut that grass out. I have to remember to do that before we go today. So firstly, let's delete those. Save file, save as 65. T65. T65. And then activate T66. Save that. And then T67. Can't remember what one we started on. I don't know how many frames we've done today. Was it from 57? So we might have done 10. <laughs> 67 PNG. Okay, so now let's cut out. If we go to get rid of the colors, get rid of the white. And then I believe it's this background. If we cut out using this tool here 
I see the lasso tool. No, come on. And if we cut out this. even want these two here so if we cut that out and then just play around with the brightness oh hang on a second why did that not grab what was it on this layer it's on a different layer change the saturation and then what I'm going to do is add a bit of blue around the bottom uh, and then maybe a little bit of white Let's add a little bit of a titanium white Then even we'll go even better. Duplicate it. This is something I haven't even contemplated properly yet. But the reflections of all these Tanistrophius. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do all that. I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Okay, so save that as another layer. So. So save that file, save as, we'll save that as grass bit number one, just in case I need another grass bit. Grass bit number one. Hello Nintendo Shark. He says, oh this is cool. Well I'm about to end the stream and we'll see how far we have come, but I'm just going to set uh, set it ready for when I come back to it, which is like this. And I'll save it like that. Okay, so file save, and let's move over to the edit. And I'll quickly do this because I need to finish the stream, but add files. So we need grass bit and we need 65, 66 and 67. So 60, 65, go in there, 66. I don't know why it always jumps to the top layer. If you just pop, maybe if I delete this layer, what is on this layer? Is there anything on this layer? No, let me delete that. Delete that track. Maybe that's what's causing it to jump to the top. And then 67, and I'm gonna leave 67 big. No, it does just jump to the top, brilliant. Uh, I'm gonna leave it big because I'll do it so. Okay, and then we're going to add grass bit. Uh, I'll put that up and I'll add grass bit in there like that. Okay, let's see what this looks like. And what I might do is actually let's go to the display capture version. So you can see if I take this window out you guys can see much bigger. So let's see. Is it going? To, is it rendering it? I think it's rendering it. That's why this thing is going across. Wait till it gets to the end. And then we'll see what it looks like. Nice. 
Nice. Nice. So it goes past the grass bit. I don't know how I'm going to do his reflection. I might have to render the background with him uh, and then with his reflection as like one thing. Let's get it even bigger. One more time. Here we go. Let's have a look. It's growly. He sees the other Tanistrophius, hisses, and then decides to walk around. And obviously, bear in mind, I haven't added in motion blur. I haven't done any of that. I do like that turn. That did come out nicely. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching today's stream. Uh, let's get rid of that. Oh no, actually, yeah, let's get rid of that. Um, yes, thank you for today's stream. Uh, thank you, Tom for, and Michael for joining the Patreon. That means a lot to me. Um, I'll send Tom a me private message. And uh, yeah, I really hope you guys have enjoyed this. I will be back next Tuesday, UK time, 12 till 3 again. Um, uh, and I don't think I will be streaming this Sunday but if I do I will so just keep an eye out but I don't know if I will um, but yeah anyway guys thank you so much for coming and I will see you in the near future stay safe ta-ta